once I reach a thousand subscribers, I will always have a live chat on the first Friday of the month at 8 p.m. So please subscribe, click on the bell and let's get a thousand subscribers very soon. Good morning and welcome back to Planet Old History. Today we are going to discuss what if the Moors never invaded Iberia. The question can also be asked in a different way, such as what if the Muslims never invaded Iberia or what if the Visigothic kingdom survived, etc. But the main point of this scenario is the following. The Visigothic kingdom will survive and Islam will never truly set a foot on Iberia, besides maybe some smaller battles that will occur. As you may know, Islam in the beginning had a lot of success and spread very rapidly, mostly through the forces of Muhammad and later on his followers and much later things got more complicated and I will now not discuss Islam itself. But to give you a picture, Muhammad died around 632 and all of Arabia was conquered and only 100 years later the Muslims fought against the Frankish Empire where they lost few battles and were repelled from Francia and then later on behind the Pyrenees. So what were the Visigoths up to? To sum it up, the Visigoths who were related with the Ostrogoths who were in Italy settled around southern France and they had Toulouse as capital which they lost to the Frankish Empire and then most of Iberia belonged to the Visigoths but later on their kingdom had many problems and many people wanted to challenge the king's authority or they were just unhappy with him or there were other political reasons also the Byzantines they somehow in intervened a few times that, and they supported an usurper etc etc so it was a very complicated picture a very complicated political situation in Iberia However, there is no clear reason if there was a treason against the Visigothic king or if the governor of Tangier was just very ambitious. Let's ask ourselves now, what if the Moors never invaded Iberia? The first thing we need to make clear is that the rule of the Visigothic kingdom is not questioned. The authority of the king also will not be questioned. There were problems between King Roderick and the sons of the former king called Vitiza. Let's say that the son of Vitiza would become king instead of Roderick or that Roderick would somehow be that or get sick during his infancy. Surely this will not eliminate the possibility that a Muslim invasion will happen However, it would give the Visigothic Kingdom the chance to somehow consolidate and now that we, if we have a more consolidated Visigothic Kingdom, it will also mean another thing. Charlemagne is butterfly away, or Karl Martel. The Frankish Empire will be totally different and it is possible that the Franks will not expand as much as they did in OTL and that the Carolingian Renaissance would not happen. However, the Visigoths, they had the foundation to make something similar happen. I'm talking mainly about Isidore of Sevilla. Isidore of Sevilla was a bishop of Sevilla, of course, and he made a very important work. Not only did he collect many works and books from ancient authors, but he was the first Christian writer to try to compile somehow a summa of universal knowledge. It was some sort of encyclopedia. Many of otherwise lost works from antiquity were saved by him in one way or another. He was regarded as the most knowledgeable man of his times and I think that if the Visigoths were somehow able to consolidate their rule in Iberia, Sevilla could become one of the first cities 
in Europe where a university could be built and thus instead of the Carolingian Renaissance we would have a Visigothic Renaissance. Toledo for instance might also be one of the cities that would come into question as the rule or the capital of the Visigothic Empire was also very often considered as Toledo. Now battles against the Muslims would probably happen every now and then. And the Visigoths, who were not really good with the navy, or I don't know even if they had some type of navy, they would start to focus on their navy as they were open for attacks from Muslims, pirates, and even the Vikings later on. Only the Pyrenees would be a very secure border as for now, and they would station some forces in there and later on be able to recapture some lost lands. Without the Frankish Empire, the Pope would first look for Byzantium as his main protector, but also Byzantium would have problems and thus Christianity would be much more decentralized and Catholicism could become more like Orthodoxy or maybe more like Anglicanism. The Pope will still be on the top of the Christian hierarchy, but every kingdom would continue to have some of their own church councils their own meetings with their kings and so on. Just like the Visigothic kingdom would have more councils of Toledo, for instance. Moreover, without the strong Frankish empire, Central Europe would become more Slavic, and there is a potential for more Slavic kingdoms and duchies in the areas of today's Brandenburg, Mecklenburg, Vorpommern, Sachsen, and even areas like Hamburg, for instance. If there would be some type of crusades, I think it would be mostly redirected towards former Christian territories. Not only would Jerusalem become a target, but the Visigoths could potentially set up smaller duchies in and around Morocco and the exarchate of the Africa. And they might even experience a similar revival with let's say the Crusader states, where suddenly there would be a revival of Christianity in Northern Africa, where they would set up those types of Crusader states, for instance. Byzantium still declines, while Iberia and North Africa would interact more and more and become one. Perhaps without some, perhaps with some corruption and some money, a Visigothic kingdom king would love to see his status become higher, which convinced also the Pope and the Byzantine Emperor to get himself the title of Roman Emperor, let's say. The Vikings, due to the fact that the Visigoths improved the navy, would not really be able to meddle in the affairs of the Mediterranean, and the Visigoths could island top from Malta to Sicily to Lampedusa to Sardinia to Corsica and annex them in a new empire. Italy would also become part of their empire and the Pope would now become a mere puppet of the Visigoths. The benefit for him would however be that his authority would not be questioned but the imperial crown would quasi be inherited only by the Visigothic kings. It is possible that the Visigothic kingdom would become known as Hispania only, but Hispania would include a much larger area than in OTL, with more control over Morocco and Northern Africa, trade routes of the Zahara would help to spread Christianity, and many monks would choose to proselytize the tribes and the peoples of Western Africa, for instance. Afterwards, gold from Mali would be discovered and it would force the Visigoths to sail around Africa. Madeira, the Canary Islands and even Cap Verde could become an integral part of this new Visigothic Empire or Hispania. Mali could have a bad time and up as a colony or they would actually have the benefit to become a trade partner with the Visigoths, although I would be more sure that they would end up as a colony. To sum it up, the Visigoths would control all of Iberia, 
most of Northern Africa, most of Italy, parts of today's France, colonized Madeira, the Canary Islands and Cap Verde, and have trade outposts around Africa. They would be the most advanced empire in Europe, but have constant pressure from local Muslim powers, especially in Africa. The Frankish Empire would probably be divided into many tiny duchies. England would still be very, very Germanic, actually, while Central Europe would become more Slavic. Most of Asia would still be unaffected for most of the time, and as for the Americas, it would really depend. However, with the Visigoths sailing across Africa, it would take another power from Europe to sail to the Americas. But this would take more years until it would eventually happen. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon and join my forum forum.planetalthistory.ga Until next time on Planet Alt History.